Hey, good morning. All right, man. This verse, this verse he gave me. Look, we're, we're near the end. There's no doubt about it. Judgment's coming, and you can see it just by watching the news. Look, they rule over us through deception and fear. Okay, you gotta, you gotta understand that. You gotta wake up because it's the spiritual that's played out in the physical, not vice versa. Okay, the truth is right in front of your face, but most people can't even grasp it. Okay, uh, and and look, YouTube is doing some crazy crap. Like like I said, I'm getting videos uh, removed left and right all the time, and it's really weird because I got. I mean, you know, there's hardly. There's not many people that are really watching, but but yet I know this for a fact because um, I've seen the numbers change and stuff. Not that there's, you know, I'm looking at numbers or anything so much, but I, I can't help but to notice it, especially with the small little uh, three minute videos that say a lot, a lot of truth being put out there in them for sure, where I just take snippets, you know, little pictures with, uh, you know, phrases and different sayings and, and Bible verses and stuff and, and throw them out there kind of put them together and uh one day it'll say like 20 something views and then the next day it'll say like 14 and i've seen it i've captured that like what's going on here with youtube and why 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 the channel why my channel i mean there's hardly any you know there's only not a whole lot like it's not a big channel it's a very small channel so why are they even suppressing that why are they screwing around with that? I don't, I don't get it. Unless, <laughs> unless there's a lot of truth in it. Okay. So, anyways, we're like our battle is spiritual, man. It's a spiritual battle. But can you see it? Are you, are you understanding it? And these verses, he's he's telling us you better make up your mind on who, who you're putting your trust and faith in this world or him. You know, all those who try to save their their lives will lose it, and all those who lose their lives for his name's sake will gain true life, eternal life. And uh, have no fear because this, this world is a simulation and it says that in this word in multiple verses, but not like you think, not like a computer simulation, something that's far more serious. Um, anyways, so let's get into this. I'm just gonna read a few verses here in Mark chapter one. And uh, the verse I really felt the Spirit impress on me was verse 15. But there's some words that we need to understand. So hopefully I won't stutter and stammer too much. And uh, we can get through this. And hopefully it'll, it'll help stir some minds. You know, and that's what it's about. You know, stir your mind. So you really start to uh, uh, consider these things and really think about them. Okay. This wasn't our beginning. This wasn't our first place. And people, I, a lot of people are starting to wake up to that. Um, you're a spiritual, uh, eternal being that was created by God. You're a part of the Supreme God, right? You're a spiritual being. And um, you're going to spend eternity where you choose to, basically, by where you're placing your faith and trust. Okay? Um, so... Here we go, Mark 1, and I'm going to start in verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Okay, I'm just going to look at a couple words here. The word came. Okay, when you really take a look at it, look, and this is being led by a spirit. And you can do that or not. I hear a spirit. I hear him speak to me. He leads me through his word, and he tells me to do things that I normally of my own thoughts would not do, you know, in a... Uh, and I have confidence in that. I have confidence in him. I know I've heard his voice. And sometimes, like, he's he's really spanked my butt. I mean, sometimes he's, like, I was totally thinking something wrong. And he, like, boom, said, no, it's this. This is what's, you know, I mean, and it's, it's just the craziest thing. My sheep hear my voice. That is true. That's literal. That is literal. I wish people could grasp that they think oh you're just coming up with that because you listen to this or that or this is out of your own mind you, you don't get it until it happens to you you won't know that you can't know until it happens you, you can't it's impossible for you to grasp and i'm not saying you i'm just saying people who uh yeah and unfortunately a lot of christians people who aren't born again of the spirit let's put it that way a lot of people think they are but if you never hear God's voice, you know, you know, it's, it's just hard. It's impossible for someone to understand unless they, unless this occurs, unless they completely give themselves over to him. 
there's that. And look, I stumble every day. You know, I'm not claiming to be better than anybody. I'm not, but I do know for a fact I hear his voice. So there's that. So anyways, and it came to pass in those days that Jesus came. Let's look at this word came. Here it's a Greek word 2064. Anyways, he came to find a place. So to have influence. Okay, he came into existence. Okay, to establish his influence of the light for one to grow in it, for people to grow in it. Like I was looking at this, I forget if it was the BDB or theirs, but anyways, it's just the words the spirit makes stand out to, to me as I'm giving myself completely and listening to his spirit unroll the scrolls to me, right? Which only Christ can do. Okay, so there's that. So th there's a lot in that word king. And it says from Nazareth of Galilee. Let's look at this word Nazareth. Because this is going to help with verses that are further down. Understanding these things. So I just say that. So from Nazareth, this 3478. Into a place, this guarded place. Uh, all who are being held captive. Basically, it's like you're being guarded from the truth people. And look how the spirituals played out in the physical. The truth is being censored. It's being hidden. It's being concealed. It's And who conceals it? Who conceals the truth? In Proverbs 25, too. You really got to take a closer look at that word that was used for God in that particular verse. And the kings take a better look at that. It's the honor and glory of a king to seek them out, to search them out, to diligently seek him every day, be a good Berean, right? Those who are members of his royal family, basically, is what that's talking about. And that would be all of us, because we were, but yet we fell, and now we will die like a man. Psalms 82, 6. So if you can understand that, you will understand the Bible so much more clearly. It's simple, but, but mankind just refuses because they're too prideful in their own knowledge and understanding, and they worship the creation more than the creator. You know, they idolized themselves, these bodies of flesh. They made, we made ourselves our own idol, these bodies of flesh, and we worship it. We follow it and we listen to it, our flesh, which is this carnal, bestial, animalistic nature of mankind that's in, that incites us to sin, basically to serve ourselves and do what we think is right, do what we want to do, okay? It's, it's all that. It's the image of the beast that speaks to you all day long, and if you just go blindly through life, it says you're breathing unconsciously. Unconsciously, you're like the walking dead until you are born again from above of the Spirit of God. God's Holy Spirit comes into you. And then you can, that two-way communication is restored. You're reconnected. You're grafted back in to the kingdom of God and you can hear his voice again. So there's that. Um, anyways, so this word Naz Nazareth means this guarded place. So he came here into this guarded place to find influence, right? Uh, he uh, came into existence to, to establish his influence of the light, of the truth, for one so we can grow in it, into this place that is guarded, right? So understand that. All who are being held captive, he came to set the captives free, right? That's what he said. He came to set the captives free, all into this guarded place here in this world. In the, uh, so Nazareth of Galilee. And this word Galilee, ooh, uh, 1056, I think. It's hard to read my chicken scratch. Anyways, he did this to complete a circuit, but a special kind of circuit of these heathen, these idol worshipers who worship the flesh, these bodies of flesh, this physical world, the creation more than the creator, okay? And this was to divide the upper and lower kingdoms, to divide who wants to be with him and who don't, right? The light from the darkness, all that. These upper and lower kingdoms. And it said in Palestine, which when you look this up, it's the ancient land of the Philistines, is, is the land of God's enemies. So he came into this guarded place, into the land of God's enemies, so he could find influence and establish the truth and influence people by revealing the light, giving the light for them to grow in it so they can complete this special circuit, come full circle from exile to being restored from exile, okay? Understand that. 
understand that. And straight away, now verse 10, and he was baptized of John and Jordan. Okay, so then there's more to that too, but you know, I wasn't led to dive into that. So anyways, 10, and straight away he come up out of the water and he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descended upon him, descending upon him. So uh, what word was I looking at here? Guarded place having a straightforward Michigan. Straight away, the word straight away. I didn't write down the number. Anyways, so he had a straightforward mission. He understood it completely. So straight away, when he came up out of the water, out of the semen, was birthed into the physical form, he knew his mission and he understood it. And the heavens were opened unto him and the Spirit of God descended upon him and just filled him. He was completely God, completely uh, full of the Holy Spirit and completely man all at once. So he understood it. Now verse 11. And there came a voice from heaven, from God, right? No doubt, saying, You are my beloved son in who I am well pleased because he never sinned. He never disobeyed God. He was sent here on a mission by God to save us, to restore us, to bring us back home, to reconcile our relationship to our Father, to our Creator. Right? We weren't supposed to do this. Our bodies are that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we all partake of the fruit of it. The sin, the depravity, the, the simple nature of this bestial, animalistic nature of mankind, the flesh. Okay, so understand this. And uh, verse 12, And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Let's look at a couple words here. The word driveth is 1544. Okay, uh, so the Spirit shone his influence over him and compelled him to go uh, to go out into this wilderness, right? To go. And, and when you look at this word wilderness, this dry, desolate place, okay, uh, devoid, devoid of God's aid, basically, a place that lies between two limits, two end places where you're going to end up, either heaven or hell. It lies between two two places. We live on a flat plane of existence, and man, I don't even know how to get into it. Don't think of it like you've been taught, like stupid, okay? Every single thing, even the government's own documents, everything, leaving the surface when they develop planes, rockets, helicopters, a flat, non-moving surface, okay, is designed. And so, you know, you got to think of it like that. But it, is it within a, a, yeah, there's a, I don't know how to even, I can't even understand it. But it's not what we've been taught, I'll tell you that much. And that has been proven over and over and over and over. So I don't know what else to say about that. So you can believe that or not, whatever. It's right in his word. Um, so, uh, where are we at here? Oh, yeah, into this wilderness. This, uh, that's deprived, deprived of water, this living water, right? Um, into these chaotic, empty vessels, earthen vessels. Uh, into this ground that needs to be cultivated. These earthen vessels, right, made of earth, our bodies, Flesh that need to be cultivated, need to be prepared so we can bring forth fruit, so we can produce fruit. Okay, um, into these guarded, this guarded place, deprived, guarded, like it just said earlier in the verse earlier. This guarded place, now this, right? Okay, uh, and it said, uh, like a we're like a flock that's been deserted by our shepherd, but. God hasn't deserted us. He's always with us. But you're, you're being led astray by Satan, your flesh, which is his throne. Our flesh is Satan's throne. That's how he rules over us, by our carnal nature, carnal minds, through our bodies of flesh, this image of the beast, this idol we've made for ourselves, that we made our own God, listening to it and following it and obeying it, right? Worshiping it, loving it, living and loving the lie. Okay, so... There's that. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot more for that. So there's a lot contained in that word wilderness you need to really take a deeper look at. So anyways, now verse 13. And he was there in the wilderness, 40 days tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts. That's us. 
<laughs> okay, and the and the angels and look in, in, in the spiritual is played out in the physical so that no man is with excuse. You gotta understand all these stories from a spiritual perspective, which only God's Holy Spirit can reveal to you. So that's that's what I'm gonna say about that. And the angels ministered unto him, and the angels ministered unto him. Now, when you take it, this is the way the Spirit laid it out to me. These messengers. And the angels are messengers sent by God, right? So these good angels who were led by God, okay, ministered unto him. When you take a deeper look at this word, this is the way his spirit made. So ministered is 1247. I did write down that number. And I looked and I seen a lot of this in the Thayer, his Holy Spirit led me to. And just all these words he made stand out. Okay, so seeing all these good angels who are led by God, it helped him to stay strong on his mission to sustain life, on his mission to su sustain life, to, to restore them, to keep them, right, for his self. Um, influenced him to stay on this, to stay strong on his mission. Like they nourished him mentally and, and physically to stay strong on his mission to sustain life. Okay, it helped him and kept him. So these good angels who are being led by God helped him to stay strong on his mission to sustain life. Okay, so understand it. He knew he loves us so much. He was willing to die for us, right? To get us back, to pay the price we couldn't pay to restore us so we could go home. Okay, so there's that. So now after that, John, who was put in prison, Jesus was put, so after that, John was put in prison, and there's a lot to understand there. And Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now this word John is 2491. It says, uh, Jehovah's grace, uh, giver of grace, uh, God has given his grace to, the one who God has given his grace to, John, he was the baptizer, right? Um, he is a mighty warrior of God, a exile who has returned to God, an exile who returned to God. All that's contained in the word John. So there's that. And he was put in prison. Now this word prison is 3860. And what did I see a lot of this in? Was it the BDB? Yeah, maybe the BDB. Okay. Um, he was given over to God's enemies. He was judged by them, condemned by them tormented, punished, scorned, betrayed by those who he was actually close to, those people who he knew. So understand this. Once you truly become, once you find your true identity by becoming a restored exile, by turning back to God, putting your faith and trust completely in Jesus Christ, and you're born again in the Spirit, those who are closest to you, those groups of people who you think you belong to, like even the churches and the Christians, they will scorn you. They will torment you. They will condemn you. They will betray you. Okay? All these things. Because what did Jesus say? If you follow me, expect to be treated like me. So if you're in this big church group and life is just, yeah, I mean, we all have struggles that are common to man, but everything's good right? You're, you're going right along. You, you, it, and I'm not saying these people aren't saved because faith is small as a mustard seed, but you still are missing a bigger part of the picture. Uh, maybe the most important that will help you let go of the things of this world. We're born into death and condemnation, spiritually separated from God. That's why you have to be born again above of the spirit you are the walking dead you're lost you're deceived and we've been taught something that is wrong right from the get-go and it's and it's because of the great number of the followers and the great length of the following and because of conceit excessive pride in their own knowledge and understanding of things and that's why we're deceived you know so if everything's like hunky-dory with everyone you're walking around with do you think you might not have something right, especially when Jesus Christ himself said, expect to be treated the way I was? And who was he treated the worst by? The members of the church, the leaders of the church, all of this. 
So really think about that one. Think about that. When you say something, like, like I said, when I first saw the Mandela effect, and I didn't even know what it was about. I didn't even un understand. I never even heard the term. I just knew that things had changed in a Bible that I had been studying for over 30 years. And it seemed like a supernatural change. And, and there's multiple examples of that because there's residual evidence if you even care to look at it. The Word of God is Jesus Christ who never changes. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh. God incarnate. The Word of God. Right? So... All things were created by him, for him, and through him. So you got to understand that the book that we have, you know, yes, it's a great guideline, and that's what's going to help us. But you have to be led through it by his spirit. It's a spiritual book. And um, and Isaiah eleven six, True Shock TV does the best job I've ever seen. And Wake Up or Else and some other channels out there. There used to be a bunch of them. They tell you what the verse says now and what it used to say. Look, it's crazy. The word Easter is in the original King James now in Acts. It's craziest thing. But Isaiah eleven six was the lion shall lay with the lamb. Now it says the wolf. And when I first presented that to my pastor, I mean, I was freaked out so much by it. I didn't know what was going on. But I knew where to, I cried like a baby for days every time I even thought about it. It just made me break out into tears because I know we're at the end when this stuff starts to happen. And, um, and people can't see it and the pastors can't see it. Most pastors and leaders of the churches can't even see it though. They don't even recognize, but some do, but yet they refuse to talk about it because they think it'll turn away the congregation who doesn't see it. So that's deceptive in itself right there. That is not a good leader. So just saying that. So my pastor, who's a great, and I love and respect, and I'm not saying whether he's saved or not saved. When I presented this information to him, and I was even willing to show him tons of residual evidence that's still out there in other books, other writings, other plaques and pictures and engraved in stone and on tombstones and everything else. Okay, there's tons of residual evidence for it. When I presented it to him, he said, oh, no, it was always the lion shall lay with the wolf. You, you're miss." remembering <laughs> it's like oh my gosh i can't even you know so anyways that's enough on that subject so you can believe it or not man that's on you but i'm going to tell you this if you can't see it it's probably not a good thing because he writes his word on your heart and your mind okay so yeah it's probably not a good thing i'm not going to say you're not safe i don't judge it only god judges that or go on your way to being saved. So I'm not saying it. Like I said, he promised to never forsake us as long as we have the faith the size of a mustard seed. Now, may we have to go through some further tribulation? You know, this, pre well, it, it talks about that down here in, in one of these verses here we're going to get to. So there's that. You might be squeezed a little harder. Because that's when we learn the most. We learn the most when we fail. Like I said, I wrestled forever, but I learned, and I was good at it. I was naturally gifted, thank God. Um, but I learned the most when I lost. It's when you learn the most, when you're put under pressure, when things go wrong, when things go bad. That's when you're really tried and tested and your true nature comes out, right? So there's that. Uh, so where's that? Uh, put in prison, yeah. So we went over that. Pre and, and Jesus came into Galilee, this place to complete a circuit, right? A special kind of circuit of these heathen people who are worshiping the flesh, these idols, uh, to divide the light from the darkness, the upper kingdom from the lower kingdom, heaven from hell, all this, who's going to belong to what, you know? And it's, and it's just and it's true because it's your own choice that puts you there. But it's Christ who can is the only one that can restore you back to God and reconcile your relationship. Only through Christ, by giving you that gift of his Holy Spirit to guide you, right, and teach you. So, there's that. Okay, so, so he's been preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, this good news. Okay, now here's verse 15, the one I really felt this spirit impress on me. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. So repent ye and believe the gospel. Okay, now it seems, you know, 
pretty straight up. You understand, okay, Christ is there. He's saying time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. He's here uh, with us is God, Emmanuel, L, right? Being God, like JK impresses so much, L is God. Jehovah is the self-existent, self eternal, one true God is L. We are Elohim, right? But, but you know, and there's so much more to it. I I don't do a great job of explaining it, but but look, he says, look at Uriel, Samuel, Joel, all these things, flame of God, judge of God, Michael, who is like God, L, L is God, so understand that. But God did come in the form of a man, in the likeness, in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he was not simple, okay? He was completely obedient to God his entire life. That's why there's only one way, only one person who can restore us to God, to himself, basically, by putting our faith and trust completely in him because he is the word, in the word, in the word. Our faith and trust back in the word of God who is Jesus Christ. Okay, there's that. So that's all I'm going to say about that. So we'll read that one more time. 15, and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So here's the way his spirit unrolled the scrolls to me here. So he's saying indeed, which is strongly emphasizing something to be true. So indeed, he is truly confirming his word to be true, calling out each of his children. So he calls each of his children who went astray, who were led astray, us, the sheep, left our first estate, left our father's house, we're all the prodigal sons. Understand this, okay? Calling out his children, each of us by name, individually, by our individual experiences, trials, tribulations, everything we have, by the revealing of the truth of his word, he bids each of us to give an answer to him, to say yes to his marriage proposal, to unite with him and his cause, to preach this good news, the gospel, by revealing the truth to us and setting us all free, all who have been held captive here in this world, by this strong delusion in our own minds and hearts, by opening our eyes and healing our deafness and, and healing our blindness so we can see, hear, and believe the truth. He came to reveal it, not conceal it. Okay, so there's that. Concerning whosoever will listen to him and take heed, pay attention, and strongly consider what is being said through his word, through him. Okay, saying... Your limited time your, that we were sojourning here is now, is now fulfilled. This is now, this is now your opportunity to turn back to me, to turn back to God. Because he is God incarnate, to turn back to him, okay? That was foretold, it was foretold by the prophets and by all the notable, notable events that we see occurring all around us. So know that time has been fulfilled. Our, jur our sojourning here, like all of us, we're the exiles, we're the foreigners, we're the aliens, sojourning in a strange land here. Okay, that, that's this world. Understand what's going on here. Okay, it now is our opportunity to turn back to him, our creator, at this decisive epoch, this special occasion, this end of an age, this age of grace and dispensation, right? It's ending. So that ha has, that all creation has been waiting for, that all of creation has been groaning and waiting for, okay? Bringing it to its conclusion, bringing this age of grace to its conclusion. It's perfect ending, perfect ending, truly the kingdom, the kingdom of God, right, by this transfer, and it's coming to an end by this transfer of authority and ownership and rank. When Christ was here, when he came here, God with us, right, Emmanuel, when he came here, by this transfer of authority because of what he did on that cross, by this transfer of authority, because authority, this world was given to Satan to rule over for a time, and that time is over, coming to an end very quickly. So it's now is your time, you know, your opportunity. You must make a decision. Okay, truly, you got to believe the truth or or you're going to believe a lie. And unfortunately, the churches teach you something that isn't right. I'm going to head to the gym after this. <laughs>
So anyways, okay. But here's the funny thing is, first thing I get up, I have to feed and water, give water to and feed all my animals, my dog, my cat, my chickens and ducks, give them fresh water, give them food, right? There's a lot of spiritual meaning there that I just realized. It's kind of weird. But anyways, okay. So an ownership and reign of your true king, this transfer of authority and ownership and the reign of your true king, the one true God who reigns supreme over all creation. This time is at hand right now. It is about to happen, which all will see. Those who are near and precious to him, who've been restored, returning from their exile and restored, having the relationship reconciled back to the Father through their faith in Christ in the word of God. Okay, and those who've alienated themselves from God by believing a lie, living and loving a lie, the strong delusion, the deception of this entire world. What we think it is and what we've been taught it is and what we've been taught our bodies are wrongly. They're living and loving a lie. They're trusting in the lie of mankind, the deception of this world. It's time to squeeze, to put pressure on all mankind to make their decision on who they will serve. You're going to serve God or you're going to serve yourself. There it is. Out of fear, try to save your own lives. All this. Okay, you can see it. You can see it. What's been happening, man? And so many Christians lined right up and took that immediately. It's so sad. And our government has been nothing but liars. You know, and I think there's good people scattered in there. But man, overall, they're just holding us captive and stealing our wealth, basically, is what's going on. Just the spiritual is played out in the physical. There it is. Okay, so... It's time to squeeze, to put pressure on all to make their decision on who they will serve, okay? Who they will join themselves to. So I ask all of you to repent. Open your hearts and minds. Make amends with your fellow man and with God and turn away from your past sins. It's time for a fresh new start, a fresh new look, to look at things from a different perspective, a spiritual perspective. And consider and reconsider what you were led to believe about this simulation of life that we are in here in this world. The strong delusion. What you were taught true life was, but it was actually death. There it is. Join me. Join Christ to have understanding. And so you will be able to comprehend the truth. The spiritual, spiritual truth having the ability to perceive divine things that come from above, come from God, so you can recognize good and hate evil, so you can judge soberly your thoughts. All this is contained in the word repent, right? So you can judge soberly um, all of your thoughts and feelings and your purposes, you know, whatever you set out to do and your desires, okay? So you can acquire true knowledge, the truth, okay? The breath of life, which will awaken and animate your soul. So you can, so you, you're raised from the dead then. You're raised from the dead spiritually. You're restored to God spiritually. So this breath, so once you have the breath of life, which is the Holy Spirit of God indwelling you, it awakens you and animates your soul. He does this Holy Spirit. So you can attain, so your soul can attain its highest end and secure eternal blessedness in the kingdom of God for which you were designed for right from the beginning, predestined for right when you were created from the beginning to have eternal life by believing what is true, believing in the word of God, trusting by placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and his words. To save your soul and trust your spiritual well-being to him. Be convicted by this truth and believe this good news so you may obtain salvation. Be set free. Be set free from this captivity, this guarded place that we're in, in this world. Okay, by our, set free from our flesh's control over our minds, okay, and hearts. Okay, so there's that. So you can obtain salvation by relying on Jesus Christ, 
listen by listening and obeying his uh, Holy Spirit, yielding yourself, giving yourself completely and surrendering to Jesus Christ so you can receive your reward as a good angel. There's that. It's the way he laid it out to me. Now, verse 16. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, now I'm not taking any words back. You, please understand this and then listen to these next two verses. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, this is Jesus Christ, he saw Simon. Is this Simon Barjona, maybe? Peter and Andrew. He saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye. And follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. There you go. So there's those verses. The way his spirit unrolled the scrolls to me. And I hope you got something from it. I hope it stirs someone's mind. And like I said, YouTube is doing some weird stuff. I can't help but notice. I mean, it's not like I, I dwell on it or dive on it, but it irritates me. What irritates me like when, when I, even when I was a young child, you know, I'm, I'm a little guy. I'm only like five, six, to be honest. I'm like five, six, but, but I'm about way 170. I'm, you know, and, and I'm not like out of shape. I, I work my butt off, but it's, it's taking a toll on my body. But anyways, when I was young, I could not stand. And I knew that this place wasn't my home. I remember trying, you know, climbed to a top of a fence and jumped off backwards like when I was just a little kid, because I couldn't stand how mean and evil and wicked and rude and the other other little kids were, how they would tease you and this and that. You know, and I was like, I want to, I'm looking up to heaven, to God, and I'm like, I want to come home. I knew it then, and that stuck with me, that experience. And there's been so many other things God has spoken to me, revealed himself to me. You know, like I said, uh, I was praying in my mind once after work, and my wife was pregnant at the time. And, uh, I ended up losing my first child, you know, um, anyways, but, uh, so I was, I was getting ready to smoke some weed in someone's van after work and, uh, me and my, uh, brother-in-law and this guy, you know, and I liked the guy, he was a good worker, but he was very, very hyper, high strung, whatever, did a lot of drugs, more than just pot, right? But anyways, no offense to him. He could be saved now. Who knows? I hope so. But anyways, we're in a band, and he's talking about why everything went wrong on the construction site. We had all these cement trucks lined up, but it was, like, old, too long, so we couldn't pump it up to the floors it needed to go. Anyways, and I started praying in my heart. I'm like, man, this isn't right. I shouldn't be sitting here to do this. I should be getting home to my pregnant wife. You know what I mean? And uh, anyways, and as soon as I started praying to Christ, what would Jesus think about this? you know, and started thinking about Jesus Christ, he stopped right in the middle of talking and he looked straight at me and he made the sign of the cross and then flipped me off and said, F you, Christ lover, and then continued talking like nothing happened. I seen that as clear as day. I saw it. This is a spiritual thing. My brother-in-law, who was sitting right next to me, saw nothing, nothing, okay? I wasn't even, we weren't even smoking yet. I hadn't even, you know, drank anything, smoked anything, took anything. Okay, so, you know, and this is... It, and man, there's, I could give you multiple experiences like that throughout my life. I know, I know, okay? And I'm not saying I'm perfect, I'm far from perfect, but I know I hear God's voice. I know he speaks to me. I know the truth when I hear it. I know when his spirit's pointing me, revealing some truth to me. I know. So that being said, okay, I couldn't stand. I even joined the Marine Corps. Right, so I got beat up a lot when I was little. I got beat up. Like if I saw someone being picked on for the way they look or this or dressed or whatever it was, I would step in and take that beating. I would I would dog out the person, and I was a little guy got beat up. So, anyways, um, this is going through my whole life. I will, you know, this expect to be treated like him, like him, and it was the members and leaders of the church. That I couldn't believe my pastor couldn't see that Isaiah 6 had changed, you know. But that that was a big wake-up call for me. It's like, okay, yes, I, I do gain, I am nourished going to church. 
But you have to listen to his word through the filter of God's Holy Spirit. Otherwise, it's, you know, it never returns void. But you, you might be thinking more of this world and this experience we're having here. It's the strong delusion. The whole world, it's so big. That's why it's the strong delusion. It's everything you were taught. It's everything you think. Or, or it's, it's all around you. But can you see it? There's spiritual beings around us. There's angels. There's demons. There's just so many things all around us. And I've seen him. And he's allowed me to see him more than once. And I, like I said, I'm no better than anybody else. But if you're not seeing the spiritual, if you're not hearing the word of God, if you're not laying hands, you know, and all these things, we all have, there's a diversity gift. So you don't have to do them all or, or whatever. Each is given a different amount, like the parable of the talents. And it's what you do with it. So understand that. Let's join him, join his cause. You better make a decision on what you believe. The word of God or the lies and deception of this world. And unfortunately, that means a lot of things were taught in church as well. So I'm going to say that. And, and our John was betrayed by those who were close to him. He was arrested, put in prison. When you really take a deeper look at that word prison, yeah. He was assaulted. He was scorned. He was betrayed. All these things, tormented, condemned, judged. Like, you're going to be judged by those who know you because they know you. And when you say things like this, they're going to think you're nuts. And so many people think I'm nuts. But it is what it is. I'm ready to leave. I don't fear that. I'm ready to go. But I will serve my fellow man and love harder than any, <laughs> as hard as I can love the people that are around me that I come in contact with as I can. I'm, I'm just going to do the best I can. But I'm still in this body of flesh, so I will stumble, and so will you. But that's when we learn the most. Okay, so anyways, God bless you. Show everybody love and respect the best you can, and let's, let's finish this race strong and gather as much fruit as we can for the kingdom of God while we're still here because time is short. All right, have a great day. Bye.